trust in you. In you. in you, everybody lift your voice and say it. I believe, I believe you. I trust, I trust in, you. in you. Oh Lord, oh, Lord. I trust you. I trust, I trust in, you. in you. I need everybody to raise your voice and say it.
was a Pentecostal preacher and we were singing a little bit like this. So long, bye bye. If you dealt with any problems, any issues this week, you ought to say goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, so long, so long, bye. In the name of Jesus. Hey, I feel something happening in the name of Jesus. We have. church from to help me say it in the name of Jesus that mighty name of Jesus Satan everything you tried this year Satan everything you tried this week Satan you have to go oh tell me you can step in Say it.
Tell him yes. Tell him yes. Hey. Tell him yes. Come on, Holy Ghost Church. Tell him yes. Oh, yes, yes. Come on, lift your hands and say it. and give him glory thank you for your power thank you for your presence thank you for your anointing jesus we worship you jesus we glorify good morning and welcome to worship here at new mount isle of african methodist episcopal church in chesapeake virginia this morning's message will will explore the experience of a group of people who were in a difficult moment that that forced them to ask difficult questions such as the reality of God's love, care, and concern for them. If you've ever lived through a difficult moment, if you've ever asked difficult questions about the presence of God, won't you stay tuned for today's word? In addition to the word of God, we will simply worship God for all that God has done. And all that God will do in our lives, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, I pray that you would make that place a sanctuary. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. My family and my friends, welcome to worship. glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy course is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in the house. Lord, I have loved thy habitations, a place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O, o sing to, to the Lord a new, new song, for, for he has done marvelous things. things. Make, Make a, a joyful, joyful noise unto the Lord, Lord, 
all, all the earth, earth saying praises. praises. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Mother, we come before you as empty pitchers, before, before a full fountain, praying that your Holy Spirit would, would pour out among us this day, wherever we are, in our homes, in our cars, wherever we are, God, we pray that you would pour out your Spirit that we might be able to experience the power, your power in our lives. Power to heal those who are hurting. Power to lift those who have fallen. Power to comfort those who are bereaved. Power to give strength to the weak, wealth to the poor, hope for the hopeless. God, we need you. In these desperate times, we want to experience your divinity. And so we offer up our praise and thanksgiving that we might usher in your presence in our lives. God, we know that you're already here. Help us to lift up our heads to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help does, in fact, come from you. And as we lift our heads, we lift our hands in praise and worship and thanksgiving believing that you do still have the power to heal us in the midst of a pandemic, to unite us and make us better in the midst of racial injustice. God, do what only you can do. Heal, restore, and deliver. And over the course of this worship experience, help us to lay down our heavy burdens that we might leave this place lighter than we came, ready to run on to see what the end will be. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God has not promised me sunshine. That's not the way it's going to be. But a little rain.
be all right. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You got to praise him like you're grateful. Once again, good morning and thank you for joining us for worship here at New Mount Isle of African Methodist Episcopal Church in Chesapeake, Virginia. If we were in person, uh, the choir would be singing right now. And I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you came. And while I cannot see you, uh, I'm so glad that you've decided to come worship with us virtually. Won't you please at this time, if you would, uh, just say hello in the comments section of Facebook or YouTube and, and, and New Mount Olive family, won't you respond to those comments? Won't you like those comments? Won't you love those comments? And let all of our virtual family and friends know just how happy we are to worship here together. We have just a few announcements on this uh, Sunday morning. Last weekend, uh, we conducted our trustee board elections uh, via a drive-in balloting, and it went very well. In fact, we had a higher voter turnout in this election than we've ever had in any year since I've been pastor of New Mount Olive. And so I want to thank every single person, every single member of the New Mount Olive family who went out of their way to be a voting member of our church family. We are very, very pleased to announce that the following persons have been elected uh, as trustees here at New Mount Olive for the 2020 through 2021 conference year. Sister Kamiko Brown, Brother Breon Brown, Brother Benjamin Copeland, Brother Roger Graves, Brother Kenneth Gray, Sister Cynthia Odoms, Brother Vernon Peterson, Sister Annie B. Spence, Brother Garland Wilson Jr. We are happy to appoint Brother Deshaun Spence as a trustee, as a junior trustee, as well as recognize as trustee emeriti, uh, Brother Jose Scott and Brother Raymond Edmonds Sr. We also want to recognize Brother Dominique Spence, uh, who is a very and much appreciated former trustee as he travels across the country uh, with his work. We praise God for all of those trustees and Brother Roger Graves. Of course, has been reappointed as the chairman pro tem of the trustee board. Uh, we also want to recognize all of those persons who have been appointed as stewards for the 2020 to 2021 conference year. Uh, Sister Carolyn Alexander, Brother Matthew Brown III, Sister Asini Brown, Brother Colin Coleman, Brother Lloyd Copeland, Sister Ida Cromwell, Brother Calvin Hankin Sr., Sister Marie Murphy, Brother Edward Odoms, Brother Dexter Spence, Brother Philip Twine, Sister Kenya Wilson, and we welcome back as an active steward, Sister Marilyn Collins. Thank you, Sister Marilyn. And so that are all, those are all our uh, senior stewards. We invite, we celebrate as a junior steward the appointment of Sister Shauna C. Butler, and we celebrate all of our stewards of Maritime, Brother Marvin Copeland, Sister Diana Tide, and Sister Connie Whitfield with a special celebration uh, for Sister Diana Tide, who has just moved over to the Emeritus Board. And so we will celebrate her as we always celebrate those stewards uh, who have served faithfully as active stewards for many years. And now as they move into retirement status, we celebrate their many decades of service. We will do the same for Sister Diana Tide in the coming days and weeks. So stay tuned. Uh, we have more leadership appointments and elections that we'd like to announce. We will do that at a later date. When we will publish an entire leadership directory for the 2020 through 2021 conference year. For all of those ministries who have yet to elect or appoint leaders, please try to do that within the month of September September, and all of those uh, 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 organizations that are waiting on me uh, to help in those regards. We will get to that uh, in, the early, in the first half of the month of September. So please be patient as we fill out all of our our leadership roles and we can hit the ground running in this annual conference year. Next week, we celebrate 112 years as a New Mount Isle family. It's, it strikes me even as we begin to fill out our offices and fill up our positions, 
for this conference year that this is the 112th year that we as a church family have sat down to elect trustees and appointed stewards. We have been doing the work of the Lord in Money Point in South Hill here on Campus Stella for 112 years. And next Sunday, we'll celebrate that. We'll praise God for that. We'll worship God for that. That for many persons in this church, you can say for 112 years, your family, your mama, your grandmama, your great grandmama have worshiped here at this church together. And we don't take it for granted. We, we don't take it for granted, particularly uh, in the COVID season. I mean, it, some churches are falling away, disbanding that we have remained together in good times and in bad, in season and out of season. We have preached the gospel and we have worshiped God. We praise God for that. Next Sunday, right here virtually, we'll worship God together. We'll worship God together virtually. And as always, we invite all of those persons who wish to help us celebrate financially to give an offering of any amount. Many of us strive to give, including myself. We strive to give in the amount of our church's age, 112. And so I'll be giving 112 as celebration of 112 years here. You don't have to do that, but I invite you to celebrate in some way as we celebrate the past to prepare for the future by giving an offering. We invite you to do that. And we'll have a very, very, very special slideshow, uh, just like we did for Family and Friends Day, to show all of the faces, some who have passed on and gone to the great beyond to celebrate the history of this church. Please join us. The last announcement is this is uh, the school year is beginning to start. And here at Newman Olive, we traditionally have done a back to school drive for school supplies. Last year, we were able uh, to give supplies to over 100 students at two different schools that we have partnered with for the past two years. We partner with Rena, B. Wright, and Portlock Primary Schools. This year, we have contacted both schools in, 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 a, in an effort to do the same thing. But they encouraged us that they do not have the same needs that they had last year. And so what they asked us to do is to be patient with them uh, and to basically be on standby. Because while I don't think they need the same school supplies they needed last year, they will need other things. And that will come to light as the school year begins. And so what we're asking you to do is if you would just donate to our missionary society, we'll be ready to give them what they need. Uh, and if they don't get back to us soon enough, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just help the teachers out um, as they as they as they as they navigate this 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 new environment. And so while we wait on our school partners to give them what they need, uh, we do recognize that within our own communities, there are students who are in need. And so if you know of any student who needs school supplies, we will be donating school supplies uh, uh, on a need on a need basis. So let us know if that need exists by calling the church at 757 uh, 545 5593. Please call the church at that number or email us at contact at New Mount Olive, A M E C dot org. That's New Mount Olive, spell out Mount, New Mount Olive, A M E C dot org. And we will be sure to help anybody. We do not want to turn away anybody. We want to help every student so they can be successful uh, in this very strange upcoming school year. But the Lord is still good and God will still guide us through even these turbulent, turbulent times. It's now offering time here at New Mount Olive. Uh, and as I've just mentioned to you, we are committed to being a church that that, 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 that serves Christ and meets the needs of our community. Uh, I've just told how we want to meet the needs of the community, and we're actively searching out for ways to do that. I'm inviting you to be a part of that. So please take a moment to give via one of the five ways of giving. You can give via our website at www.newmtolive.org slash give. You can give via your mobile device via the app Cash App at dollar sign New MT Olive or the app GiveLify, searching for New Mount Olive Amy Church in Chesapeake, Virginia. You can also mail it to us at 1953 Campo Stella Road, Chesapeake, Virginia, 23324. It's New Mount Olive Amy Church, 1953 Campo Stella Road, Chesapeake, Virginia, 23324. Or you may drop it off at the church between the hours of 1230 and 130 uh, on Saturdays and Sundays. Next, this upcoming week, as we celebrate church anniversary, we invite you to come drop off your tithes, your offerings, your special church anniversary offerings. And as a thank you for just being a part of the New Mount Olive family for one more year, uh, we want to give you just a token of our love and our appreciation, a little gift, a little gift, a little gift to each member of the New Mount Olive family. And so please come on out and drop your off drop off your offerings uh, and or pick up your gift as a member of the New It's New Mount Olive's birthday. And because you are in Dumont Island, we want to give you a gift. So please join us next week. If you have an offering in your hand right now, won't you get that offering? In, if, you have, if you'd like to give today, won't you get that offering in your hand 
and a smile on your face. Lift it in the air and declare with me, this is my offering. I give it because God gave it to me. I lift it because God lifted me. I smile because God smiled on me. Thank you so very much for your giving. Thank you so very much for your worshiping with us today. If you have, you're on Facebook, you're on uh, Twitter, if you're on anywhere, won't you share now the service and let somebody know that they can drop into the worship service just in time to hear selection and to hear a word from the Lord. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your share. God bless you. Come on.
Amen, amen, amen. Won't you praise God wherever you are, even as we look to the word of God, because there is a word from the Lord. This morning's scripture will come from Exodus, the 17th chapter. Exodus, the 17th chapter. We'll be reading the first through the seventh verse there. Then I'll read just two verses from Exodus, the 20th chapter. Uh, verses one and one through th- uh, one and two, one and two. We'll read first Exodus the seventeenth chapter, verses one through seven. Exodus seventeen verses one through seven, and then Exodus twenty verses one and two. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. The seventeenth chapter reads: From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped in Riphadim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted for water and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock? with thirst. So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand a staff with which you may strike the Nile. Take with it in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did in the did in did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Is the Lord among us or not? The 20th chapter, the first and the second verse reads, Then God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. Won't you turn to your neighbor on your right or on your left and and say and repeat after me, neighbor, oh neighbor, strike the rock. Neighbor, oh neighbor, strike the rock. I want to preach this Sunday morning on the subject, strike the rock. Won't you pray with me before thy mercy seat, O oh Lord, behold your servant stands to ask the knowledge of your word, the guidance of your hand. This we ask in Jesus' name together we say, Amen. I want to preach on the rock. We want to preach this morning on the subject, strike the rock. The children of Israel in this passage are thirsty. Of course, you know the children of Israel. They are descendants of a common ancestor named Abraham, to whom God had promised that his children, these children, would be a great people in possession of a great land. Yet within a few generations of God offering that promise, his children were far from being a great people. They were far from possessing a great land. They were, in fact, held as possessions in the land of Israel. I mean, the land of Egypt. They were, in fact, slaves for 400 years. Mothers and daughters, fathers and sons worked beneath the scorching Egyptian sun. Until one day, Moses came to lead them on. The musical animation of our ancestors spoke of this moment when God came to Moses and said, Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt's land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. And this is where we find Moses and the Egyptian in the This is where we find Moses and the children of Israel. Not too long after God spoke to Moses and Moses went to work. Uh, And now here he is 
leading them on from the place uh, from this land of Egypt to the land of Israel. Here he is, Moses, leading the children of Israel from a land that was flooded with blood and tears to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Here he is, Moses, leading the children of Israel on from a land of pain inflicted by men to a land of promise gifted by God. Yes, there, here we are. And Moses and the children of Israel are doing their best. They they're doing their best to make it to the promised land. Uh, but before they get there, we find them here. Before they get to that promised land, we find them here in the wilderness. Before they get to that land flowing with milk and honey, they are at, in this land where they can barely, where they cannot find a drink of water. They end up here, in between bondage and freedom, thirsty and angry, <laughs> thirsty and angry, we find them in a difficult position. Difficult positions will force you to ask difficult questions. Verse 3 uh, reveals a physical need. Verse 3 reveals their physical needs when they ask Moses, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us, our children, and our livestock of thirst? Uh, but in verse 7, we find a deeper need and a deeper question when they ask, is God with us or not? Is God on our side or not? You ever been in a difficult moment in your life that led you to ask difficult questions about the divinity of God? You have been hurt and asked the question, is God a healer? You have been lost, asked the question, is God really a way maker? Uh, you ever been so far bent over, you ask the question, is God really a leaning post, so, so unable to do what you wanted to do, what you felt called to do, that you asked the question, is God really able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think? Is God really God? And if God is God, is God on my side? Does God love me? Does God care? They're in a difficult moment, and it's forced them to ask difficult questions. Yet if we flip over just three chapters in scripture, we find that their questions are answered. When God speaks from the Mount of Sinai, I am the Lord, your God. In essence, I'm on your side. And so my question that I want to ask this morning is how do they get from this question to God's answer. How, how, how do the people get from their questioning of God's divinity and God's loyalty to God's answer that, yes, I'm God and yes, I'm on your side. How do we move from our difficult moments and our difficult questions, questioning the divinity and loyalty of God to a moment where we can sing with our ancestors, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Well, we discovered in just a few stages in this passage of Scripture. Uh, the first thing we learn about the children of Israel is that their thirst, their physical thirst had, had led them to be spiritually thirsty and spiritually wanting such that they became nasty. <laughs> they, they became nasty. They became so mean and nasty and angry that they wanted to stone Moses. That's what Moses said in his own words. He goes to God and said, God, they're they, they trying to stone me. Yes, yes. And, I, and I've discovered that sometimes people, when they are in need, they, they don't necessarily know how to ask the deeper question, where is God? So they'll ask the, the, the lighter question, where is the water? 
uh, and, and they take it out on Moses. They take it out on God's prophet. And I'm sure there are times in each and every one of our lives where we've taken out our anger and our frustrations about deeper issues on whoever is standing in front of us. Yes, they became mean. They became nasty. But 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 yet it is their dealings with Moses that represents their first step toward an answer from God. They ultimately discover that God is their God because Moses prayed for them. They ultimately discover that God is their God because Moses prayed for them. Now, you might not know what it means to be mean and nasty and yet still have somebody pray for you. But I know what it means because it's happened in my own life. About 10 years ago, I was a freshman college student, St. Mary's College of Maryland. Like the Israelites, I was in a difficult moment where I, I was missing out on some physical and social needs. And it forced me into a spiritual drought. And I was talking to my mother about the situation. And I remember my mother saying, Christian, uh, let's pray. And my answer to her, and I had just preached my trial sermon just a few months earlier. I had just proclaimed to the world that I wanted to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. My mother asked me, can I pray for you? And my answer was no. <laughs> my answer was no, no, I don't want to pray right now. No, you can't pray for me. No, hung up the phone on my own mother in the middle of the night. I got, I got an email from my mother. She said, I know you didn't want me to pray with you, but I prayed for you. That's what she said. She said, I know you didn't want me to pray with you, but I prayed for you. And that's why whenever I hear that great old song, somebody prayed for me. They had me on their mind. I'm so glad they prayed. And then we always go second verse. You know, the second verse, my mama prayed for me. Oh, she had me on her mind. She took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad she prayed. And, and I, that's my testimony. It's not just a song. It's my testimony. I'm so glad she prayed for me, even when I didn't want her to pray with me, when I didn't want her to pray for me, she prayed for me. And the testimony of the children of Israel, if they were ever to sing our song, they would say, Moses prayed for me. He had me on his mind. He took the time and prayed for me. And I'm so glad he prayed. They know that God is their God because Moses prayed for them. And I don't, I don't know who's watching, but I want to let you know that somebody's praying for you. Just yesterday at nine o'clock in the morning, the, the intercessory prayer ministry of New Mount Olive, they prayed for you. I, I want to let you know that on Tuesday nights when we gather together for prayer meeting, we're praying for you. Somebody is, in fact, praying for you. It might not be your mama. You may not have the blessing of a praying mama or a praying dad, but you have somebody in your somebody is praying for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even when you don't know the words of prayer yourself, they didn't pray, but Moses prayed. Moses had to good sense when they were being mean and nasty to look up to God. He looked up to God and he told God, what shall I do with this people? He looked up to God. God must have looked down at Moses and said, I'll tell you what to do. Go up to Mount Horeb. You might not know that name, but elsewhere in Scripture, Mount Horeb is called Mount Sinai. Right. Mount Sinai is the holy mountain. It was at Mount Sinai that Moses saw a bush burning. And it was that bush, that bush, that burning bush, the very manifestation of God. God did not show up in the man of a human being with clothes. God showed up as a bush clothed with fire. And God told Moses from that bush, go down and tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. It's that mountain. Is that mountain, Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai. God said, go up there without the people. And he said, strike the rock. And from that rock on that holy mountain, from, he said, strike the rock. And from that spiritual place, there shall flow a river of water that will meet the Physical needs of the people. Oh, there's a there's a beautiful shout right there from that spiritual place. There will flow a river of water that will meet their 
physical needs. That's why the mission of the AME Church is, and you can look it up on Google right now, the mission of the AME Church is to minister to the social, spiritual, and uh, physical needs of the people. Uh, uh, The children of Israel know that God is their God because God provided for them. The children of Israel know that God is their God because God provided for them. Yes, God provided for them because when Moses struck the rock, there came water that satisfied their physical needs and answered their first question. Why did you bring us out here to die of thirst? Well, they're not going to die of thirst now. They're not going to die of thirst now because they have the water to meet their spiritual. They have the water to meet their physical needs. And all throughout history, in Afri- particularly in the African-American community, but in other communities, we've discovered the power of when, of when faithful people like Moses go up to mountains all by themselves. They didn't say, he didn't say, come on to the sacred, go, come on to the spiritual place for me. He says, God, I, I, he, he, God sent Moses all with just a few people to the spiritual place. And he struck the rock. And because he struck the rock, the physical and social needs of the people were met. And all throughout history, there are those persons who can testify of what happens when somebody strikes the rock and meets spirit, I mean, physical and social needs. Harriet Tubman can testify that somebody struck the rock and she she found in the spiritual place the household of God she found that to be a stop on the underground railroad and she could hide there and she could have her physical needs met there and she could have her social needs met there because somebody struck the rock she discovered the power of the church as a spiritual place W.E.B. Du Bois one of his first teaching institutions was at Wilberforce University a university owned by the A.M.B. church because he somebody named Daniel Alexander Payne struck the rock and he discovered that from the spiritual mount called African Methodism there ought to flow a river of education so that black students and black professors like W.E.B. Du Bois could have a place to grow and flourish. He, uh, 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 Daniel Alexander Payne, when he founded that university, struck the rock and W.E.B. Du Bois drunk from the river. Uh, 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 That's why even Whitney Houston got her start on a church choir because some choir director showed up the children's choir rehearsal. Her own mother and struck the rock and she drunk from that fountain of musical teaching that is the black church's youth choir and she learned how to sing and now the whole world knows her voice because somebody at church struck the rock and met her physical and social needs i'm sure there's somebody over the airwaves that can testify at some point in your life when you didn't feel like going to church for worship you received something that met your physical and your social needs and that's why the last point on their journey is they did discover that God is their God because they had the strength uh, to persevere they discovered that God is their God because they had because they persevered they kept marching on from the water that they got from Moses striking the rock it gave them strength to march on and see what the end will be and not too long after they had this difficult moment they had a moment where they could see God all for themselves not too long not too long just three chapters of scripture they made it to the mountain where Moses was uh, remember Moses Moses had left them, but now they had walked in three chapters on the strength of this water from the rock, and they made it to the spiritual place for themselves. And it was here that the whole nation of Israel stood on that great spiritual mountain, and they heard a voice crack from the sky in the 20th chapter that said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land 
land of Egypt out of the house of bondage. And suddenly in that moment, that second, that deeper question of is God for us or against us was answered. They knew from God himself that God was on their side, that God was with them. They be, and all of this happened because in the middle of the story, Moses struck the rock and from that rock came a river of life, a river of water. And it's still true for us in our moments of difficulty and distress that lead us to ask difficult questions about the divinity and the loyalty of God. Well, I've got news for you. If you're going through a difficult moment, you can still strike the rock. Uh, and you may be asking yourselves, preacher, how can I strike the rock? I can't make it to Mount, I can't make it to Mount Sinai, much less, new, I can't make it to New Mount Olive, much less New Mount Olive. How can I go to the mountain when I cannot strike the rock? Well, uh, I've got news for you that 2,000 years ago, the rock changed from a physical location to a spiritual person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a rock. It's this rock where our ancestors could sing, Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. It's this rock, the stone that the builders rejected, that's now become the chief cornerstone. And the good news is, I don't have to go to the rock because the rock came to me 2,000 years ago. The rock was laid in a manger 2,000 years ago, almost 2,000 years ago. The rock was hung on an old rugged cross and some Roman soldier struck the rock and out of the rock side there came blood and water and somebody said the blood from that rock reaches to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. Somebody said the blood from that rock soothes all of my doubts calms all of my fears. You may ask yourself the question what is this rock? But I'll respond by telling you who is this rock? His name is Jesus, and he died on that day. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. And the Bible declares that he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And he sits high, and he looks low, and he's listening to your prayers like God listened to Moses' prayer. And if you ever want to strike the rock, you don't have to go to the Mount Sinai. You can go to God in prayer. If you ever want to strike the rock, you don't have to go to Mount Sinai. You can just pray to pray. You can praise and you can read your scripture. Is there anybody out there that wants to strike the rock? That wants to that wants to strike the rock and, and what comes out of the rock called Christ. It's real. Physical meeting, the stuff that meets our physical needs, but also satisfies our spiritual desires. Because Jesus said, any person that comes unto me shall never thirst anymore. That's why when our ancestors wanted to go to the rock, they'd begin their prayers by saying, I'm just a empty picture before a full fountain. That's how their, their sermonic imagination said, I'm just an empty picture before a full fountain. That's why somebody else said, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. They learned the secret of striking the rock in difficult times. That's what the church has been in the lives of African Americans. The church has been a spiritual place where we can strike the rock and find physical and social and political power and the physical and the social and political power that flowed from these great spiritual places gave current to the civil rights movement, gave current to colleges and universities, gave current to soup kitchens and breakfast programs. Rams, and we had our physical and our social and political needs because somebody struck the rock in a spiritual place and our needs were met. Perhaps you're living in a difficult moment. You want to strike the rock. You want to become a Christian. This moment, I want to pray with you. The moment, the prayer 
of salvation. Pray with you the prayer of salvation. So if you want to become a Christian, pray with me right now. And almighty and everlasting God, I come right now before the rock of ages, the one that the rock that the builders rejected. But is now I want to make the chief cornerstone of my life. Save me today, Lord Jesus. I believe in that you are a savior, that you're a healer, that you're a deliverer, that you can do all things but fail. God, love me. I know you love me. I accept your love and I love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You've declared your love for God. Won't you take a moment to, to visit our website, www.newmtolive.org slash save. www.newmtolive.org slash save. You may call the number at the bottom of your screen, or you may call uh, the number that will appear on your screen in just a moment, or you may call the church at 757-545-5593, 757-545-5593. And someone will get in contact with you real soon uh, so that we can pray with you and welcome you into the family of faith. You've just struck the rock and that rock will give you strength to run on and see what the end uh, will be. But also it's important to be part of a church family. Look what happens to the children of Israel. They were difficult. They weren't ready to make it to that spiritual place on them on their own. But Moses went for them and he struck the rock for them. And then their needs were met because Moses went up to that spiritual place on their behalf because Moses prayed on their behalf. That's what the church does. We want to pray for you. We want to meet your physical, your social and your spiritual needs. In fact, in many cases, we want to do that first. You don't have to be a member of the church to be helped by the church. But my belief is just like the Israelites weren't there with Moses at first, but they got the water from the rock. And eventually they marched to that rock themselves. Join the church now. You may not feel like you're some great spiritual warrior. You may not feel like a prayer warrior. You may not feel like a person of faith, but join the family now and we will get there together. If you would like to join the Mount Allah family, even if you don't live in the Chesapeake area, you can still join the church. You can just say it in the comment sections. I want to join. I want to join. And I, somebody from the church will reach out to you over Facebook, reach out to you over YouTube. We will reach out to you on whatever social media platform you are, and we'll welcome you into the church family. If you'd like, you can go to our website again, www.newmtolive.org slash save, or call us at 757 545-5593 uh, five, 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 and we will welcome you into the new Mount Olive family. Church family, this is your day to strike the rock. God bless you.
Thank you so very much for worshiping with us today. Remember to tap into the rock who can help you in difficult moments and assure you of your difficult questions. Yes, God's still on your side. Yes, God's still meeting your needs. Yes, he'll never leave you. Neither shall God forsake you. I want you to know of the reality of God. I want you to know that God does, in fact, care for you. Thank you for joining us here at worship today. Thank you for coming to the foot of New Mount Olive, African Methodist Episcopal Church. I pray that over the course of this worship service, something has flowed from that fountain which shall never one dry. And I pray that your thirst for the word of God has been quenched for another week, that you can go out into the world feeling full of the Holy Ghost. Now, as we leave this place, but never from God's presence, May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide over your life now and forever. Together we say, Amen, Amen, and praise God. You have come to worship. Won't you go to serve? I love your family. God bless you.